this going? Cool. Good. All right. Looks like we're connecting, mostly. Uh, if you join the chat, just give me a hey, what's up? Make sure this is running all right. Get all these pop-ups, so it looks like it should be running all right. I'm just gonna open this one more time. All of them. Cool. Okay. Link the stream will do actually I'm not actually certain I better get it Cool, so uh, I don't really have anything planned for tonight. For What's up, Serge? Kira's joining in? Man, it's been a little while. Slobo, what's up, man? Um, I don't have much planned. I think I'm gonna just kinda kill the elephant in the room at the beginning and ask any questions you guys might have about how Octane 4 is going to compete with Redshift, um, Tokyo Megaplex, Christopher Rutledge also asked, or not really asked, but just posted it up on the Octane forum and Panos responded. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, just kind of a broad overview of how he feels or responded about it. Um, and then we'll just jump into whatever, but I'm a couple minutes early, so I'll see what's going on. What's up, Billy? All the gang. So it looks like chat's working. Definitely. Cool. Glad to see that. Um, sorry again. Well, I haven't really apologized yet, but sorry for this kind of weird Wednesday night instead of Thursday. I'm going to be in North Carolina tomorrow through Monday. So um, I just had to shift it a night. But yeah, you'll see I've got these tabs open. Um, so we can start talking a little bit about what happened with Octane 4 being announced and what's Redshift's response and what I've seen out of it. And then we can actually do some cool Q&A if you guys want. Um, I don't have anything planned, as I said, just a few moments ago. So it's really just kind of going to be whatever you guys want to do. So, all right, Octane 4 came out. Um, at least the standalone and the plugins are still being developed and you can go check that out for yourself. I'm sure you've at least seen it on Slack or wherever you hang out and it's big news. Um, so it seems like a lot of people are really interested in all the AI denoising stuff and cleanup. And what I've seen has been really awesome. David Aryev did a little preview of it, of like the how fast it is with loading geometry 
And then I've seen some people on the BroGraph Slack, which if you're not a part of is BroGraph.com slash Slack. And they've been doing tests in there. Um, and it's really fast, like interior renders that usually take like 20 minutes are down to like two minutes and like half the amount of samples and it cleans up like 99.9% of it. So um, I know this is a Redshift stream, but it it's pretty, pretty cool to see what Octane's putting out there and competition's always good. So um, that's that side of it. So as I said, also is Tokyo Megaplex posed a question on the Redshift forum or just posted the link up there saying, this is some exciting competition. Panos kind of responded broadly saying, no, AI lights to clean up point lights and things like that. How's that actually gonna work? There's already really well-known techniques that all almost all renderers are using. And you can see I have it right up here on the screen if you wanna follow along. I don't know if that's showing up very well but hopefully it is. Um, and then the denoising tech looks good, but most people agree that you gotta actually test it in some real scenes and high frequency texturing and complex reflections are gonna kinda be a little bit harder for things like AI to handle. Um, so that that's pretty much it. He's, he just kind of said, you know, take a look at it yourself and, and see, and then take a look at ours when it comes out and see, and just, you know, don't go by what a video says. So I've been seeing what people have been showing. I'm just going to open up Slack really quick and go into Octane really, and just show some examples. Um, so this is from Guy Lit, and this is the noise that they sent to AI. And then this is the outcome. And then this is the original version that I click over, there we go. The original version that took 20 minutes. So original AI, and you can see there's just a little bit of shift with transmission. And we think that might not actually be. I suppose Panos meant light probability. Yeah, uh, it's, who knows what exactly Panos meant. Um, I I think he's kind of just playing the PR game a bit and saying, you know, it, it's a lot of talk. You got to actually test it out. Um, but seeing it here as I'm showing, you know, um, oh, Slowo just asked too. I, I missed that question. Sorry, Slowo. Um, is it working with animation or stills only? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know enough about it. Um, I think it's animation. Um, if it's stills, that's, a, you know, that's, that does open up a whole nother conversation about, about the tech. Um, so I have to look into it some more. I've, I've kind of only listened to the BroGraph podcast and just read through it quickly as the, the slides on the video came through. So, um, that is a good question. Um, so anyway, this is the original, this is the AI cleaned up straight out of Octane standalone. You can see there's some transmission issues with a standalone, but that has nothing to do with the AI. And then this is the noise. And you can see back here where something that got pointed out is that there's light bulbs back here, like glass light bulbs. You can't even see the detail in with the noise here. And then they come in right in here. So, um, re really cool to see this competition coming from from Otoy. So I guess, you know, my, my opinion is I, I still use pretty much everything. My day to day now has been Redshift for a long time and most of my client work has been it too. Um, I don't really plan on switching back to Octane. So, it, but it is nice to see this competition coming and, and pushing this. So uh, if anyone in the chat has any questions or thoughts on it, I'd, I'd love to open a dialogue up about it as we go through the night. But um, Slobo, I don't have a good answer for you. I, I need to go back and finish listening to the podcast and reading the, the video or the slides that came out in the video here, which is here. You can really easily find the link. But I don't know if it really said anything about... Um, 
about animation versus stills. I'm gonna, I, I would think that they definitely know it should work for animation. All right, uh, so something else I wanna cover is a lot of people ask for AOVs and I did my own AOV tutorial, but Dan Neeson just did an official one for Redshift's channel. So if you wanna know how to use AOVs even deeper than what I did, go check it out. Like, it, I mean, it, it just came out. Um, it's only got like 20 views and it was published today and I, I'm not even sure if it's been out for more than an hour. I just saw it on Twitter, but I scrubbed through it and he goes through it really well. Um, so I, I highly recommend checking that out. It's two parts, this is part one, part two, and you may know Dan's work from this really awesome Iron Man stuff that he did um, where it's just super detailed and even like heat worn metals in here, where is it? Come on, back out. I guess I have to hit back. Um, do they show the heat worn metal? Oh man, I should have just got a dance page. Do, 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 do. Iron Man Behance. Hmm. Well, let's go through the images really quick. You can just see through here that they're just. That's oh, going to take me back to this page. Ah, here it is. Behance. I should have gone here because he's got bigger images and better detail. Um, but Dan definitely knows what he's talking about with AOVs and just really high level work. So if you want to learn even more about AOVs than what I had in my tutorial, go check out his stuff. Hey Esteban, uh, yeah, I, I have a tutorial on that. It came out maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, Maybe even a month ago. Let me go to my channel and see. If you go to my videos. Oh, YouTube, what are you doing? What are you doing, YouTube? Internal error. That's no good. If you go to my channel and videos. Wow, it, YouTube is not liking that. All right. Anyway, go to my channel. Um, yeah, I did break YouTube. I don't know. It even had a monkey. I've never seen that before. Um, go to my channel. And like two weeks ago, I, I did a, a whole tutorial on it. So let's see. Kira was saying, can't wait to try it ourselves. Yeah, I... I I downloaded standalone. I just haven't had a chance to play with it because I'm getting ready to travel. Um, I did break YouTube. Esteban, I just told you. And then Slobo saying, oh, same thing happened to you. Man, okay. Killing the internet. Um, Slobo saying, can't wait to see the C4D plugin for version 4. I hope the new update is good enough where Redshift hopefully at least think about making GPU limited subscription. I um, mean, so. Uh, Redshift has announced that they are in the works of doing a subscription model. They announced it, man, like last August or something. Um, it was just more like a security thing that they got to work out of figuring out how to implement it. And I think they said it's been implemented now. Now they just kind of have to think about the pricing structure. Um, I, I I don't really care either way for me. You know, it, I kind of like having a flat rate um, but paying month to month, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, especially if you're a freelancer and running your own business and having tax write-offs, you know, it, it's just, it's all the same thing. It, I, I don't really care either way. So, I mean, I'm going to try this one more time. My channel. Videos. All right, so <laughs> YouTube's dead apparently if you see them sending this information okay so those monkeys great great youtube all right um why don't we just hop into cinema 4d what do you guys want to talk about tonight um you know I've, it's kind of just up for grabs at this point i see man there it says there's lots of you tonight there are so far 15 16 so that's that's pretty good for 12 minutes in 
Um, but we can talk about whatever. I know Esteban, you're just talking about a tutorial that may cover how to set textures. Let me see if I can just open that file up for you. I can kind of go through it. Textures, what did I call that one? And did I save it in here? Proper textures, there we go. All right. Oh man, where's the C4D file? Uh, I probably saved it in the wrong folder. Let's see, textures. That's stupid of me. All right, that's all right. We can we can kind of go over it a little bit. Um, it's it's generally pretty easy. So I'm gonna open up Megascans. Has this bridge thing, and I'll just find something in there. We can go through it. Stop breaking things. I'm trying to only break things. All right, so what's something that's modeled this? Okay. I had to fuse the normals after that, you lost. All right, well, one, uh, you may get lost by normals too because they're a little bit different um, now. So you actually have to pipe them into a bump map. If you don't know about that, it's all one thing. So I'm gonna just do like level of detail two. There's an FBX here, there we go. Cool, throw this in here. So it's kind of low low poly. Um, let's just take a look at it, see how many polys. Yeah, kind of low poly, but that won't really matter because uh, the texture will make up for that. There is not a way to add subtle noise to redshift fog yet. What's up, Tokyo Megaplex? I was just talking about you, man. Like, not not even two minutes ago. Um, I was talking about you hanging out on the forums and uh, Panos's response to that. Man, why? Come on, tablet. This happened last week too, where my tablet went crazy. Okay, there we go. Is it my pen? Is my pen dying? Oh man, I think my pen may be dying. I gotta make sure this is tight. Okay, that's not good. All right, so I've got this model loaded in here and I'm gonna make a new material. Go here. Whoa, what is going on? Man, so I am like cursed with breaking things. It just said that the redshift core crash? I have never had that. And I broke YouTube with a 500 server error. This is getting crazy. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't freak out. You don't have to rewind. I was just saying that you posed the question that, uh, or not really a question, but just started the topic of Octane 4 being out. And so I kind of went over it being out and Panos's response and you know how it's going to affect anything. This is how Megascan treats you. It just destroys the core. Um, that was really strange. I'm going to try this again. Okay. Hit play. Cool. All right, we're good so far. It's because I'm doing this on Wednesday. Everything's screwed up. So we'll just name this tree. Go ahead and throw this over here. And I turn this off for now because we're going to mostly be focusing in the graph here. What's up, Casey? Mr. Hawaii. So what we're going to do is we only really need a few textures. And wood stump, here we go. So albedo is diffuse. You can see it's all RGB diffuse right there. Uh, I'm not going to use bump. I'll grab displacement and then fuzz. I don't want to do normal. I'm going to do this one here. And oh, normal bump. What is normal bump? Interesting. It's like even more little detail. Okay, so displacement albedo. And we're going to do roughness. I think that's it. Let's see. I got 
albedo, displacement, normal, roughness. That's all you need. Okay, so in general, that's all you need. You can use some of this other stuff and, and mix it together with a blender, but uh, that, that's about it. So we're gonna come in here, drag it in here, and like that, it gets added. I put displacement down there, so albedo, normal. Okay, so I'm gonna have roughness there. Is there not ambient occlusion for this? Hmm. Okay, cool. Well, there's no ambient occlusion in this model, but that's okay. So before I hook anything up, I'm just gonna go through these and make sure they're set right. So for albedo, also diffuse, you just wanna come to your gamma override and hit enable and then set it to sRGB. And then on all the black and white grayscale ones, you just wanna hit enable. So that way they're using linear, also for your normal map, just consider that black and white. Um, but you wanna make sure they're using a normal li linear workflow before we hook anything up. So I'm gonna hook these up and you'll probably see redshift pause for a second. Yeah, every time I hook one up, it's gonna pause as it converts the file over, blah, blah, blah. There we go, it's connected. Do this one for reflection. So albedo goes in normal diffuse, roughness goes in your reflection roughness. Then normal, I need to get a bump node. So we have this bump map node, plug it into here, go to texture, input, <laughs> linear workflow, schmirk flow. Yeah, uh, linear works best. We, we talked about that earlier today about color and stuff. Um, so bump, before I hook it up, you wanna change your input map type from height field to tangent space right there and toss that in to overall bump. And then this displacement here is, oh, gotta wait for it to process, there we go. This displacement's actually tucked into output, so come over here and choose displacement. So when I hit play, you'll see we get everything hooked up, looking pretty nice, it's, it's all right. There's a couple more things that we needed to set up. So first of all, we come into our, uh, oh, I forgot to add a displacement node. Let's do that. Displacement, texture map. There we go, displacement node. Uh, so the normal map has been discontinued. It's just there from older versions of Redshift. So if you open up a file, it doesn't crash. Um, but they've baked everything into the bump map now and it reads it properly. The old normal map doesn't read tangents quite as proper as they should. Um, so that's why. So it's just a holdover from older versions of Redshift so they don't crash. All right, so we've got displacement in here. So a couple adjustments I wanna make are, if I come down to my displacement and the displacement node over here, you wanna change that from zero one in the new to actual negative one. So that way displacement map will actually go in and out, not just out. So if you don't do that, it won't uh, work properly. And the other thing we need to do is add a redshift object tag onto here, come over to geometry and enable displacement. So we gotta do override and then just enable. And you'll see this gets updated right there. And it already adds a lot of detail, probably way, way more than we need. So we're gonna do like 0.125, something like that. So just to show you the difference, come back, turn that off turn it on, you can see it gets indented in there. Maybe I went a little too far, let's try like 0.25. There we go, add some more detail. And you can scale this up too, um, but something that I've learned recently is you can get even more detail out of your maps by adjusting your MIP bias. So on this advanced tab over here, if you hit like negative eight, it'll add even more detail in. You can do that on all of these and even the roughness here, just to really get some nice detail in there, fine detail. And I'll do it on here too, it's not really gonna matter for RGB. And then if we pan around, I'm just gonna go ahead and do undersampling, we'll do two. Cool, that's better. 
But that's pretty much how you get it. So the workflow, you're only gonna need a few. If you were gonna have um, ambient occlusion, you would plug that either into the multiply up here, so adjust color multiplier, or come in here to overall and overall color. You can plug it into there. Um, there's different reasons to do either. It's kind of just personal preference, I, I think. Plugging it into the diffuser albedo makes a little bit more sense, um, at least the workflows that I use. But yeah, oh, I just noticed something that I should point out to Mega Scans. This has a blank like pixel area or something right here. It's not getting textured. Ha! Huh. What is that about? Um, Gross normals? No. Nope. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Mega sh the mega scans should know about that. So, um, mega scans. Bark. Poly. Just write myself a note. <laughs> mega scans doesn't make mistakes. That is not true. I have gotten. Um, like three emails from Mega Scans where they've refunded my credits because uh, after they've inspected whatever, they realized that there was fault with them, um, and they're really good about it too. They'll they'll double your credits. So if you download something that is five credits, they'll refund you ten credits just for not keeping their product uh, up to snuff. So. Um, I just need to double check and make sure this isn't one of them that I need to re-download or something like that. Mega scans versus Quixel, they're the same thing. They're the same thing. I guess technically Mega scans is their library and Quixel is their software. Um, I don't really like the idea of their software being baked into, yeah, there's like something totally wrong right in here <laughs> my bad that's okay it's okay Chris we all we all make mistakes like texting me earlier <laughs> and me sending you gifts um, but yeah they're the same the only thing Quixel is like substance designer it's like their substance designer program but it's baked into Photoshop um, for those who don't know what we're talking about, let me just quick sell. So this is Quixel over here, Mega Scans over here, Quixel Mega Scans. This is like a library. This is software to help you build textures. Um, it it is very much like Substance Designer, um, except it's kept as a plugin for Photoshop. Um, so I don't really like that because Photoshop's already really heavy. The only nice thing is it keeps it all in one spot, but I, I think Substance Designer is like way ahead of the game. Um, I, I don't know that for sure because I haven't tried this just because of my opinion of working inside Photoshop with yet another plugin for Photoshop, but um, it is interesting. It, it, it's only 79 bucks right now, so that's kind of cool compared to how much, um, yeah, like Maxon Cinema 4D. Yeah, what's Maxon versus Cinema 4D? Maxon Trucks versus Cinema 4D. Do you guys know that, Maxon Trucks? Or I think it's Maxon Trucks, Maxon Midges. Yeah, Maxon Motors Outsource Fleet, whatever this is. So Quixel is the company, but they also make Quixel Suite. But um, yeah, either way, I mean, they, they, their scans are awesome. 
least I don't think I'm ever going to use their software. I guess I'm not logged in right now. There we go. If you guys are ever looking for textures, um, I would totally recommend Mega Scans. Polygon's really great too, and they've been doing a lot of cool stuff lately. But yeah, I I generally use Mega Scans for almost everything at this point. Um, but I can go to Poly. Don? I spelled that wrong. P O L L I, right? It's a four twenty points. No, not really. I think Polygon is also. They just announced they're rolling out another product, right? I thought they were rolling out the texture list. Is really? I didn't. See, let's see. Mega scans. What's up, Jan? How you doing? Uh, view library. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. They, wow, that, that they do have some pot leaves. All right. Interesting. Huh. Well, they must be expanding their markets and their brains. <laughs> um, but even some of these are are new from what I've seen, like Castle Stairs. Even though it does, does ugh, even though it doesn't say new, I don't remember that. Um, I like that they're doing stuff like this too, where you can get just like cracks so you can have really nice customization between things and um, concrete crack here or patch crack and you can throw it in with their other concrete stuff see here they normally do normal plants <laughs> um, wood apparently this is wood but it's like painted silver some kind of wood but yeah polygon's got really good stuff too i really thought they had just announced another product um hdrs yeah they have new hdrs too so if you're looking for hdrs and polygon or po not polygons textures in all in one spot this is really great too and their workflow is really similar um esteban if you're still watching let me go back if you look at, say this grunge wall. So you get diffuse, displacement, gloss, normals, and reflections. So um, to clarify too, if you ever get a gloss, <laughs> I looked away. They sell crack. They sell weed. Um, so if you ever are downloading something and you see a gloss map, all that is is a roughness map. So in here, inside your Redshift material come in and you go to advance and you just hit convert glossiness to roughness right there and it inverts it to, to work properly I think polygons great um, I I personally use mega scans most of all but I think their polygons pricing is competitive and and great too you know 120 credits a month is really great. What is it? Can you do yearly? So what does that have for a year? 120 times 12 is 240. So 240 credits um, for a whole year. That's not bad. I pay a little bit more for mega scans. Rocket Force, what's up? If you were about to apply a regular square texture from polygon onto a large surface, what would you do to prevent tiling? Um, let me find something. I'll just download something. I think I have some credits. I'll have to log in. 
Oh, I am logged in. I'll buy some credits. It's okay. Uh, la, la, la. Like metal? Like... I gotta find something square. Fabric, maybe? Would fabric be square? You don't want it to tile like these. Are you downloading stuff like this, this Slobo, and it's not texturing properly? Or tiles? One of tiles. Like the way I actually, I have an. Google Keep note about this of how to uh, texture without a seam. <laughs> so um, the way that I've, I've seen a lot of people do it is make a duplicate texture and plug them in to a color node. And the first one is the base layer and went into layer one. And then you use a noise to kind of blend the two together. Ground, for example. OK, so um, I think I have some ground. Let me see. Don't send it. Oh, it crashed. Yeah, so like Billy's saying in the chat, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that. Yeah, it's showing up. Okay, so Billy is saying to layer them up. Um, let me just get some ground and talk about that. I can even use soil. We'll do soil. This will be good too because I this has uh, AO with it. So uh, kill this. That. Make a plane like so. All right, so we're gonna get albedo, AO, displacement, normal, and in roughness. Yes, 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 yes. Cool. All right, roughness, normal, displacement, AO, albedo. Come in here and enable, enable. Enable and enable and then enable sRGB. Got Adobe After Effects and Fusion and Blender. Yeah, I mean, the, you're kind of going to run into areas of just everything starting to feel the same when you start to do that. So, I mean, each tool has its own advantages. I use After Effects for general motion design type stuff. And then uh, Fusion's really great for compositing and color grading. You want to try them all. Yeah, I, I recommend trying them all. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like render engines that way too. Um, what am I doing? Roughness. So with the render engines, you should try them all, see which one fits and which one's easiest for you to use and which one you like the most. Bump map, and maybe my displacement. Yeah, like they're, they're all gonna have their advantages, but you're also gonna find that they all do the same thing a little bit. And displacement. probably didn't need to do all this. <laughs> um, actually, to keep it nice and simple, I'm just going to disconnect these to show. All right, so we can do, and I'm going to come in here, see if there's any tiling. I guess that corner there. Maybe I need to make this bigger. Let's try like 2,000, 2,000 by 2,000. Make sure I get my zero in there. It's kind of just stretching out, but. So what you're gonna do is take a color layer. Right 
right here. We'll put this in our base and then we can copy this. Put that in our layer. This will come into our diffuse. And the noise, you can rotate it like Billy said, or you can just add a noise in as your mask and drive it that way. So we have that going right there and probably can do 0.05, make it a little bigger. And bring the bias down some. Something a little bit like that. All right, let's see how these look side by side. So that's the original. And that's together. So you get a little bit more randomization. And then I can come in here. So you want to rotate it 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So there's one. To, and then plug this in and now you've got nice randomization throughout and it should help hide your seams all right let's see uh crawl draw man director so I want to pour it out. Um, just pay for AE, save more money for Cinema 4D, resolve for edit and premiere. Yeah, I mean, I've been really wanting to get away from Adobe a lot lately. I just, I, I haven't been finding their products to be as high quality as they once were. It's just like the more updates they make, the more bugs it seems to bring forward or like instability. Um, so I, like I have affinity photo and affinity designer, and those are awesome alternatives to illustrator and Photoshop. I haven't played with resolve, but I heard really great things about it. Um, there's also avid and both of those are, I think around like $300 and that's it. You pay for it and you get your license. Um, so I, I've messed with avid and I know that it's solid and stable. It's just got quirks to it. It seems like DaVinci Resolve is definitely rising up some, especially now that I'm working with um, Fusion a lot more, that it kind of makes sense to download it and try it out and play with it. So, slow, but does this answer your question if you're still watching? Dude, Billy, Avid, I mean, it's kind of still going strong, at least in broadcast. Avid has brutal, does it? I didn't know that. <laughs> Thanks, Slobo. I'm glad you think I'm awesome. Slobo, are you in the States? Are you going to NAB? Because you've been... You've been following along since like I started streaming. So if you're going to be at NAB or if anyone's going to be at NAB, I'm going to be at NAB in a couple weeks. Um, hit me up, find me. I also know that Billy is going to be there. He was just on the stream a couple weeks ago. Tokyo Megaplex, who was just in the chat is going to be there. Um, all of Rograph, all of pretty much motion design it seems like it's going to be there with their giant event sunday so so encoding everything to import into the bin for avid sex oh i didn't realize you had to encode everything too learning avid at school is the reason i transitioned to the line department <laughs> all right i i have played with avid a little bit um just from working in broadcast and it seemed okay but i didn't realize 
I like I never did any porting or anything. I was just like hanging out in Edit Suite. Um, I I didn't realize you had to go through all that crap. Just want to see if, if I make this super big. One, it's still holding up detail pretty well, but I'm not seeing any seams. The only thing that I'm really seeing is just that stuff there. Um, let me try tiling this and seeing what happens. Let's do like two by two. So the only thing that I'm seeing if I start to tile it is just repeating stuff like this mud puddle right there or a rock, whatever that thing is. So Billy's saying avoid Avid. Um, I I didn't think it was that bad, but what he's saying is that anytime you import something, you have to transcode it to actually work with Avid, which sucks. So you can't just <laughs> import footage. It has to be transcoded. That is one nice thing about Premiere is that it just works. Um, but I, I should dive into Resolve and see. All right, so what other questions? Um, this is just general Q&A tonight. I know we kind of talked about Octane 4 and how that's going to affect Redshift. I think it'll be just great competition and drive stuff forward. Um, talked about texturing a lot tonight. Um, if you want to learn more about texturing, I did a, a tutorial a few weeks back. Um, what's up, Nicholas? Thanks for joining on Periscope. See you there. And Billy, I swear, if you say something with a vape, you're probably going to make my machine crash. So don't do it. Actually, just for curiosity's sake. Um, turbo squid. Oh, Billy, look, vape pens. They don't have any free. Um, free 3D. Vape. No, vape. Pen. Just vape. Oh, electronic cigarette. I could probably model one of these really quick for you, Billy. Really go to bro town with this thing <laughs> is there anything cool in here that we can screw around with free iron man no thanks free bb8 but the polys just are terrible on this why does this look so oh probably because Ghost is running. Let's try this without that. There we go. A little better. Did it show the polys? Oh, not too bad. Okay. Get BB-8 vaping. Philip, is Philip Huda's He hoodass. Is that him? Yeah, hoodass. So the way the way that I would break this down, let's, let's say like this Pokemon ball. Um so this is probably just like a really complex shader. The red would be probably broken out, and there's looks like there's some graffiti sprayed on here, and then some rough metal on here and dirt and grime on here and then you just have a landscape like this so the way the way that i would approach that let me get my handy dandy iron giant Here 
we go. He's back. He hasn't, he hasn't been on in a while. All right, so we've got Mr. Iron Giant here. Let's, let's look at this again. So it's like a, a lot of roughness and grunge on here. And let's, I'm gonna focus on like this white top and we'll go forward from there. So this metal here, we'll just throw this on and call this giant. So the white is kind of plasticky, right? So a Pokeball looks kind of like plastic. And so the, the custom is already plastic. You can see it updates right there to be white. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this like 256 and make sure I'm on render. Do, 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 good, cool, all right. So something like this would just be like a, a few different materials blended together. So this would be your base. And if you go back and check my tutorials, I, I go over making some complex shaders. Uh, Chad Ashley on Grayscale Gorilla has some, or at least one on making a complex shader. Um, so right here we've got the white, and then let's say next we've got like a kind of like a dingy white. So I'm gonna get a blender. We're gonna start building stuff. Uh, it's bump blender. We want a material blender. I'm gonna start adding stuff together. Let's go to base color in there and attach this. There we go. So we've got our base material here and we'll get this here and maybe call this dingy. Dingy? Dingy? Dingy. Dingy. Whatever, screw spelling. <laughs> Um, and we'll put this in here and we'll call it layer color one. All right, so we've got two colors here. They're doing the same thing. We're gonna make this one kind of like dingy yellow, maybe add a little bit of green in there and some roughness and put some roughness in here. When we, yeah, we'll keep it plastic just for the time being, keep it easy. I'm gonna get some noise. And what the noise is gonna do is blend these two together. So. Come in here and be our blender. And you'll see that this starts to get this dingy off white. And that's because we just need to add some higher levels of detail to this noise. So I'm gonna start to, to bring that back down and under control. Like so why is it 16? Something like that. So what I'm doing is I have hotkeys set up and I'm just kind of switching through these. Um, I talk about this in a couple other tutorials of how to set up hotkeys, but you can see my noise here, which is this node, it's driving this. So everywhere this is white coming through, it's gonna let this dingy material come through and everywhere it's black and gray, black is gonna say no and gray is gonna kind of blend the two together. And then I can do additive, which will actually start to add the two together. And you can see that they start to pile up on top of each other. So we're starting to get like this kind of grun like grungy, dingy base in there. And so some of this other stuff probably is hand painted like substance designer or substance painter, especially around like the bullet holes and things like that, at least some really good UV mapping, but we can, we can take this even further. So um, why don't we do like a dirt? And I think I might even have dirt saved. So let's see. Uh, man, I really should have finished making that dirt shader I was making for John a long time ago. It's all snow, right? It's like, well, hmm. Did I really not save that? That's all right. All right. 
we'll, we'll just start adding some like brown in just so you get the point. And the brown's gonna collect around the edges of things. So brown is gonna be somewhere in here like that. And we'll just call this dirt, even though it's not. What I'm gonna use for this is called a curvature node. And the curvature node, if I hook that up, only works around the curves. So I can bring this in here, tighten it up, and you can switch it to concave or convex. These first two are holdovers, kind of like what I was talking about before with the bump node, uh, or sorry, the normal map node. Um, just use the convex and concave. Let's see, which one do I like better? Convex. I think concave is given a little bit tighter. I'm just going to up these like 32 samples, maybe even a little bit tighter, maybe a little wider. Let's see, if I go wide. All right, we'll, we'll keep it like that. So what we're going to do is use this curvature to drive the dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and place that in layer two and use the curvature and this blend right there and hook it back up. And you'll see now around these edges, we start to get dirt. And I can try to adjust it here and you'll see it spreads out really far. And maybe convex might be a little bit better. I don't think so. Ugh. It's, it's kind of working. Um, but what we can do from here to make this really interesting and kind of blotchy is take a color layer like I was doing earlier. And we'll put this as our base color. And I'm going to get another noise and hook that up there. Make sure we get something nice and pretty. And we'll do 32, maybe even 64. Get some really tight noise. All right. And we're going to put that into layer color one, like that. And you can use this like a, a mini Photoshop a bit and just say subtract. And so in here, whoop, went right through. If I come up on the edges here, you'll see that anywhere that this is, is going to subtract this out. So if I make this a little darker, put this up here. You'll start to see these subtract out. You can add them together, so they start to merge together. So if I put this connected, you'll see some brown back in there because it's actually adding the two together. Uh, there's also a compositing node, which does a lot of the same thing, but it's only two at once. So just to show you, do base color here, no noise. This is one thing <laughs> about working with espresso. There we go. Put that there. And I want to subtract. I might need to reverse those. What's up, Nelu? I'm going to swap these. Hmm. Maybe it was working fine before. Anyway, so the only thing that's nice about using the color layer is you get a little bit more control with sliders. Um, Maybe that would be something nice. We can see in here, we get, get some details in there coming through. And if I make these a little bit bigger, like that, we start to get a little bit of dirt in that, those areas too, which you may not want. But you can mess around with it and really start to get that together. But as we start to look at this here, you can see it's kind of collecting some of the same spots. And if we went back to the color layer, you can add way more into it. So that's how you'd, you'd start to build up a really complex shader. And you just keep layering it up. Um, 
you know, if I had some graffiti to work with, I could throw graffiti in here and put it on the Iron Giant. Um, just really start to mimic these qualities here. Um, let me see if there's something else I can pull from. Like these neon glows I've talked about in another tutorial. Um, you just do that in post. Stuff like VDBs, you can use the volume for. What else do you got going on? Stuff like this is just kind of spheres. This is, excuse me. Um, this is subsurface scattering. Yeah, yeah, like hand painting is really gonna take it a lot further, especially like where these rivets are in here. And if we go back and look at the one with the Pokemon ball right here, a lot of this here looks hand painted right in there. Got to hit sight. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize he framed his stuff too. That's cool. Um, Yeah, he's got a lot of cool work, but a lot of it is just kind of layering things up and making it complex. What time are we at? Man, it's, it is 10. Cool. All right, let me make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, Billy started to talk about Avid and Broadcast. So it has a place in Broadcast World, 20 people working in the same project file in the same bin and assets. Yeah, that does that really does make a lot more sense. Actually, Premiere can do that now. Um, as of the most recent update, they allow multiple users working on the same file, and you can lock bins too, and lock files, and you can even say what edit suite you're working on it in, stuff like that. Yeah, Resolve can do that too. Um, but Premiere for a long time couldn't. It, it only just rolled out. Do, do, do. All right, so um, it's 10 o'clock. I'm going to wrap it up because I still have to pack some luggage for my trip. As I was saying in the beginning, the reason why this is streaming tonight instead of Thursday is because I am going to be out of town in North Carolina. So thank you for joining me. I know it's kind of just been Q&A and hanging out and not really organized into anything specific. But I kind of enjoy these ones, too, because I can just kind of go through chat and hang out with you guys. Um, so going forward, I know next week will be back to normal on Thursday. And then Random Chaos is the best. I love Random Chaos. Oh, yeah, Casey. Dude, Google Keep is awesome. Um, next Thursday will be, be back to normal. The week after that is normal as well and the week after that let me just double check let's see we got one the tw uh, 29th and the 5th are going to be normal and then on the 12th i'm going to have another guest coming on too um so stay tuned for that it'll be like when billy was on um i've already got somebody lined up for the 12th i may have somebody come on again either 29th or the 5th too i really like like that that Iron Giant you can get from um, Sketchfab. That's where I got it. Just so Sketchfab. I can show you really quickly. Models. No. Purchases. Uh, can I see my downloads? somehow likes here we go here it is so i got it here for free you can download it too if you want it pretty pretty decent model how did you know tokyo that 
I asked John to come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so John Hutton's going to come on and talk about his stuff. Um, if you guys don't know who John is, let's see, big green mug. He is really awesome and does a lot of quality stuff. But he's going to come on on the 12th and hang out and talk about what he's been doing and what he's been using. Um, Redshift 4. Man, Tokyo just in it so uh beyond that everything should be back to normal this week's just a little bit off so what else uh if you're not in brograph slack go check out brograph slap uh, slack at brograph.com slash slack and we hang out in there and talk about things as i was talking about before and everything from redshift to octane to fusion and music and randomness um, it does get a little weird from times and if you need to find me anywhere, I am 531, F-I-V-E, 31, pretty much everywhere on the internet. So you can do a search, find my site, reach out to me in the comments below, shoot me an email, whatever you want. Um, but as always, thank you so much for hanging out, and I hope this has been informative to you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.